Welcome to our lecture online. We are now ready to talk about the binomial probability distribution. Let's go back to the example we showed in the previous video where we had a quiz, five questions. Each answer had three possible answers. Only one of the three was correct in each case. So we saw that if we randomly, uh, randomly circled the answer, if we didn't know the questions, or we didn't read the questions, instructions were don't read the questions, just randomly answer the questions, then in each case there was one-third probability that we picked the right answer and two-thirds probability that we picked the wrong answer in each case. So now, what would be the probability that zero answers were correct because we're letting x equal the number of correct answers, the probability that one answer would be correct, two answers would be correct, three answers would be correct, four answers would be correct, and five answers would be correct. Now let's take a look at these calculations. I'm not yet showing you why they're correct, why those are the correct calculations, but if we take a look at them, they do seem to make sense. Notice that the probability of being correct in each case is one-third. Since we're looking for the probability that zero is correct, we have one-third raised to the zero power. Remember that if all five are correct, then we would multiply one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third, which gave us the correct answer. So in this case, since we're looking for the probability that zero are correct, we take the probability that any one of the answers is correct. We take that probability and raise it to the zero power because there's no cases where any one of them are correct. Notice that the probability of getting one wrong is two-thirds, and since we're expecting all five of them to be incorrect, we take two-thirds raised to the fifth power. That's essentially two-thirds multiplied by itself five times. And then we multiply it by the number one. Now, we're not quite sure yet what this is there for, although you can think of it this way. What are the possible combinations, all the ways in which you could have answered the questions, all five questions? Each question can be answered in three different ways. There's five different questions. Of all the different combinations of how we can answer all the questions, there's only one possibility, one combination, where we pick the wrong answer uh, all of the time. Hmm, is that actually true? That's true there, but that's not true there. Oh no, it is true. No, it is true. Ah, let, let me go back. So anyway, so... Why, what are these numbers right here? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Well, that is essentially what we call the binomial distribution. And how are they calculated? Well, we'll show you that later, but we want to get an intuitive feel for the value of those numbers. If you look at all the various ways in which you can answer any one of the questions, what are the possibility that in every single time you pick the wrong answer? Well, that means that each probability is two-thirds that we pick the wrong answer and there's only one combination in which that can happen five consecutive times that gives us the total probability of having uh, 0.132 probability of having that as the outcome. So now we understand what these first two fractions are and why they have these exponents. The probability of getting one correct and how many of those are there? If there's zero, the probability of getting zero correct, of course, there's zero times, we'll get one-third probability. And there'll be five times, we'll get two-thirds probability. Here we have one correct, so there's an exponent of one, two correct, exponent of two, three correct, exponent of three. And these exponents represent the number wrong. So if you have five correct answers, there would be zero wrong answers, and so that would be the combination here. But then we have these numbers right here. Essentially, those numbers are what we refer to as the binomial distribution. Because there's a much higher likelihood, there's a much many more different ways in which you can get two right or three right as opposed to getting zero right or getting all five of them uh, zero, yeah, zero right or getting all five of them wrong or getting five of them right. So we have to account for the probability, the number of combinations in which we can get two correct or three correct as opposed to zero correct or five correct and that's what these numbers represent remember when we tossed three coins there was only one way in which all of them could be tails or all of them could be heads but there were three ways in which we get one tail or one head and so the probability would be more heavily weighted against those combinations as opposed to zero heads or zero or zero tails 
The same kind of principle holds true here. The only difference now is how do we calculate these numbers? So these make sense, but how do we calculate these varying numbers? That's how many different combinations are there where we get two right or one right or three right or four right? Well, if you want to know how to do that, stay tuned. And we'll show you the technique of how to use the binomial probabilities to distribution to come up with all these various probabilities. And that is how it's done. More cliffhanger? What's that? More cliffhanger? More cliffhangers. Well, I'm revealing bits and pieces already. But yes, one more cliffhanger for the final answer. <laughs>